Hello and welcome everybody to the Access for IT Teams video series. My name is Andre Bastard and I'm Global Product Manager at Axis for Axis OS, our Linux-based operating system that powers most of our network products. Today, I have a special guest with me, Ronald Kent from HPE Aruba Networking. Hi, everyone. My name is Ron Kent and I manage security partnerships for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I'm based in the United States and have worked in cybersecurity for the last 18 years. And I'm very happy to be here today with Andre to talk about our partnership and what we've been doing together to make things easier and more secure for our joint customers. In this video series, we will showcase practical integration guidelines and technologies that are used by Access Network products to integrate securely into zero trust networks. But we cannot do this job alone by ourselves and therefore we believe in building strong partnership to create these solutions. And with Ron and HP Aruba Networking with us today, let's work out the details of our joint integration guide and outline the benefits that this brings to our customers. So Ron, I can imagine you have seen many deployments of IoT devices into the Aruba infrastructure fabric and know maybe some of the pain points our customers need help addressing with. Would you please kickstart the session and explain some of the challenges our customers face today? Sure, I'd be happy to, Andre. Speed of deployment and security are top of mind today with our customers that are deploying IoT devices on their network. And let's start with security. One big question around security that customers ask us is, how do we know the identity of a device with certainty, even when they may look identical to other devices on the network? Also, some companies use staging networks to test out new I IoT devices before putting them on the production network. And as you can imagine, this can get very expensive. There's also some other problems with that as well. The staging network may not adequately represent the production network, leading to a false sense of security. Besides the time and management overhead of maintaining two separate networks, you may also have a lack of realistic traffic volume and even types of traffic on the staging network compared to the production network. One last thing around security, there may also be data privacy issues from any testing data that's been ported from the production network for use on the staging network. From a speed of deployment perspective, deploying large numbers of devices can be challenging, especially when this includes things like remote offices, retail outlets, medical clinics, and really anywhere where you may not have the technical skills readily available to install and configure these devices and successfully put them on the network. Thank you for sharing your experience, Ron. And with all this in mind, let's have a closer look at access devices and how we can address these pain points. To start with, since 2020, access products are manufactured with a tamper-resistant dedicated hardware crypto computing module, a secure element. And when we're manufacturing our products, we supply each of those devices with a unique identity, a passport, if you like, that we call the access device ID. This is an IEEE 802.1 AR compliant identity and carries access specific manufacturer and device information, such as the serial number of the device, which is effectively the MAC address of the access device. The identity is stored in the secure element and can be used to cryptographically verify the identity of the device. And this building block is part of the hardware based security architecture of the access device that we call Access Edge Vault. But how can we put this identity to use? The answer to that is IEEE 802.1x for network access control. Access products have it enabled in factory defaulted state. So once connected to a network switch, the access device will try to use the access device ID to authenticate into 802.1x enabled networks. And using the EPTLS mode allows for certificate-based authentication enabling the network to cryptographically verify the access device ID. In the screenshot shown, you can see the access device in factory defaulted state, having 802.1x enabled and the access device ID certificate selected for EPTLS. So Ron, how do we make use of this functionality and how does it fit into the greater picture of an Aruba powered network? So let's talk about the components of a networking solution to address this challenge, Andre. Uh, the first is network switching, which provides both power and network connectivity to access devices. The Aruba switching portfolio uniquely spans from access layer to aggregation to core, even to the data center, and it all runs a single operating system. Our emphasis 
in developing this portfolio has been operational simplicity, always on high performance, and enhanced end-to-end security, of which 802.1ax and 802.1ar are key parts. The second component is ClearPass Policy Manager, which is an enterprise-grade network access control solution. You'll also hear it called a NAC that provides visibility, authentication, authorization, and enforcement capabilities along with guest services, and also integration with a broad portfolio of third-party solutions. Uh, ClearPass also offers onboard and on guard for device provisioning and posture assessment. So now let's take a look at these and how they work together with access cameras to quickly and securely onboard new access devices to the network. For this scenario, we're going to be assuming that a customer is installing a new camera. This could be in a retail outlet, healthcare facility, sporting arena, or in many other common deployment locations. The first thing that happens is the installer, after physically mounting the camera, plugs the camera into any port on the Aruba switch. And I really wanna emphasize that last point. We design the switches to have what we call colorless ports which means that the network access that the individual switch port has is completely dependent on the type of device that's making the connection. I don't need to have a specific port for cameras, network printers, or any other devices since they can be dynamically assigned when the device plugs into the switch. With access devices, we can extract the 802.1AR device ID certificate that's securely stored on the camera and validate that the device is indeed an access camera and that the serial number of the certificate matches the MAC address the switch sees on the network. This is a really important step to help ensure that the device hasn't been spoofed on the network. You can see this check happening in the ClearPass screenshot, which helps illustrate what a typical network access control policy looks like in ClearPass. Once the device certificate has been validated, ClearPass will execute the policies necessary to put the camera on the network. What we may want to do first, however, is make sure that it has all of the right patches and configuration. So in this instance, what we're putting it on is a completely separate provisioning network that's going to enable a connection from the camera back to Access Device Manager, which will apply production certificates to the device, any software or security updates needed, and perform configuration tasks on the camera so it's ready for the production network. Once that process is complete, a network reauthentication is triggered, the certificate is validated again, and now we're also checking to make sure that it has production certificates installed on the camera and the right patch level and operating system version running. If all of those things check out, then ClearPass is going to tell the switch to go ahead and put it onto the production network where video can then be streamed to the access camera station or other VMS. All of that happens automatically without any user intervention, and it's initially triggered by the device simply being plugged into the switch. Now let's detour for a moment and talk about what happens if things go wrong. In this instance, maybe something in the certificate doesn't match what we're seeing on the network. The cert is expired or issued by an unknown party or otherwise invalid. And if that happens, we've got to assume that the device is being spoofed on the network or possibly even compromised. And there's a couple of different things a customer can do once this happens. They may simply want to prevent the device from getting on the network at all. Uh, they may want to isolate it on the network or quarantine the device. Or in some instances, like what we're going to show here, is we're going to put it on a separate monitoring network so that the IT security team can inspect what the device is doing look and see what kind of command and control traffic it's generating or what type of other behaviors it has so that I can make sure and tune my rules and other systems, things like SIM, XDR, and NDR solutions to protect against other possible compromised devices on the network and also helping to prevent lateral movement of any malware. And in this case, we're routing the device's traffic to a secure location where it's going to be inspected by a third-party security solution. Also, in conjunction with this, ClearPass can communicate with the ticketing system so that IT or IT security is notified once the device is found to be potentially compromised, along with a notification that security monitoring of the device has already been started in a secure and isolated part of the network, saving them precious time during their investigation. Thank you, Ron, for walking us through the practical implementation steps. I think it's very impressive to see how we can use secure device onboarding in a practical setup. It's amazing to see the possibilities that this kind of integration offers. 
I think the automation really minimizes the system complexity and unlocks potential for the automated device onboarding that we want to make simple. This can really help our customers save both time and cost, while at the same time increasing the network security significantly. I agree. And where customers really see the time and cost savings are in deployments where there are lots of devices and or remote locations. This type of automated deployment can even reduce the skill level necessary to deploy these devices and also ensure that the human error around configuration isn't introduced into the equation. As you know, misconfiguration is one of the most common vectors used for bad actors to get a foothold in your network. And a centralized policy that can work globally throughout your network can help reduce the chances of that. One more thing I'd like to mention around 802.1AR is that for existing ClearPass customers, this is already supported today in all versions of ClearPass. And later versions even have the access certificates loaded out of the box. That's it for today. Thank you for joining us, everyone. If you have any questions or feedback, please contact us on our Access for IT Teams mail address. Also, please have a look at our joint integration guide for more technical details, as well as visit the Access for IT Teams page on access.com. Thank you for today, and thank you, Ron, for joining us. Thank you, Andre. It's been a pleasure speaking with you today, and I can't wait to hear the customer stories of quick and successful deployments and also thwarted attacks on their network. Uh, by deploying 802.1 AR with our joint solution.